Hello, and welcome to this video presentation, Filling the Gaps, Estimating Missing Data in a Carbon Footprint, presented by E3 Solutions. In today's presentation, we will review how to identify gaps and irregularities in consumption data pursuant to a carbon footprint, how to select the correct estimate model to use to fill data gaps, how to document your estimates, and how to improve the data collection process in the future. All greenhouse gas emissions are the result of one or more source activities, a source activity being an activity that impacts the organization's operations and results in the emission of greenhouse gases. Some examples are listed below, along with data sources you can go to to determine what your consumption is for each. Let's look at a sample consumption record, in this case, a natural gas bill. The bill will normally contain a variety of information, including a large amount of numbers. However, for the purposes of determining consumption, the two most important pieces of information are the time period and the amount of consumption. In this case, the time period runs from the 10th of December 2010 to the 12th of January 2011, and the consumption is 320 meters cubed. In order to properly calculate a carbon footprint, consumption data for each source activity must be obtained. This data should include all consumption that took place within the reporting period, usually one year. This graph shows the data points from the previous screen. This represents a typical natural gas curve. Notice how it peaks in the winter months and moves to zero during the summer months, then back up again in the fall. In this case, there are no gaps or irregularities in the data. Now let's take a look at a different graph. In this case, there is clearly a data gap in the earlier part of the period, as well as what appears to be a sharp spike towards the end. These represent a data gap and an irregularity, respectively. It is advisable for anyone conducting a carbon footprint to represent their data graphically in some way. This will help to better understand your data gaps and your irregularities at a glance. Looking at the data table for this graph, it's immediately apparent why the gap and the irregularity have occurred. There is a data gap from February 3rd, 2011 to March 2nd, 2011. Lower down, there is an abnormally high number for the period of November 3rd, 2011 to December 2nd, 2011. In this case, it is most likely due to an extra zero having been added at the end, a common typographical error. However, before correcting an irregularity, you should always consult the source to ensure that the number is not indeed correct. The source being a natural gas bill in this case, or a natural gas meter reading. Now let's examine ways in which we can fill this data gap. Before attempting any type of estimate, you should always make every conceivable effort to obtain the actual data in order to fill a data gap. If your data source is utility bills and you've lost one, ask your utility company if you may receive a new copy. If you are a tenant in a building, consult your landlord. In the case of items such as employee commuting and company vehicle travel, ask the relevant employee if they have kept an additional copy of their fuel receipt. Finally, you may wish to consult financial statements. Even if the actual bill has been lost, consulting financial statements and comparing them against rates may usually assist you in determining actual consumption. 
if you have exhausted all options for obtaining the actual data, it is permissible to make an estimate in order to fill the data gap. However, before making an estimate, it is important to consider the following points to determine which estimate model is best suited for your situation. First of all, if you are reporting externally and using a recognized standard, you should consult that standard to see if they have specific guidelines regarding how estimates are to be performed. Secondly, you should consider how wide the data gap is. For instance, if your data derives from utility bills, are you missing only one bill or are you missing three or four consecutive bills? Where does the data gap fall? Does it fall right at the start or end of the curve or somewhere in the middle? The source activity type is also important. It is relevant in determining not only which estimate model you will use, but also what data you will draw on to complete the estimate. Other relevant data can include historical data, that is, data from years prior to the reporting period for the facility for which you are performing the carbon footprint, as well as other similar facilities in your organization. The first method of estimation involves using the previous year's figures. This means calculating the per day consumption for that source activity at that facility that occurred over the gap you were trying to fill at the same time last year. The two formulas involved are shown below. First, to calculate the historical per day consumption, you must take the previous year's amount and divide it by the bill's end date minus the bill's start date. Then, to estimate the consumption, you must multiply the per day consumption by the current bill's end date minus the current bill's start date. Let's look at a specific example. In this example, a natural gas bill is missing for the period of March 3, 2011 to April 2, 2011. However, a bill for the same facility is available from March 2nd, 2010 to April 3rd, 2010, with a consumption value of 1,527 meters cubed. In order to obtain the historical per day consumption, we must divide this number by 32 days, the span of time from March 2nd to April 3rd, 2010. The result is approximately 47 meters cubed per day. To obtain the estimated consumption, this value must be multiplied by 30 days, the span of time from March 3, 2011 to April 2, 2011. The result? Approximately 1,431 meters cubed. Not all estimate models are useful in all situations. Using the previous year's figures is appropriate if, first of all, you have data covering the same time period during the previous year, and secondly, if conditions at the facility have not changed in a fundamental way. Examples that can affect consumption, in this case natural gas, might include increased production levels, an increase in the size of the facility, a general increase in consumption trends, weather and climate, for instance, during warmer winters, less natural gas would be used for heating, levels of employment, and general efficiency. If any of these have changed, it may not be appropriate to use the previous year's figures, since it would be like comparing apples and oranges. The second estimate model involves estimating a missing data point based on surrounding data points. Consider the following data table. Once again, there is a data gap for the period of February 3rd, 2011 to March 2nd, 2011. This is how the data appears on a graph. The yellow circle shows where the data gap lies. 
The number in yellow represents an estimate that was made for the missing time period based on the equation of the line between the first point, 2721, and the second point, 1091. Many software programs, such as spreadsheets, will have tools that can assist you in calculating missing points based on a trend. Once again, basing an estimate on a trend is only appropriate in certain situations. First, surrounding data points must be available, and these data points should not themselves be based on estimates in order to maintain the maximum amount of accuracy possible. Basing an estimate on a trend should only be used for source activities where the curve is highly predictable, with low period-to-period -period variability. Also, no abnormal activity should have occurred during the estimation period. For instance, construction, a facility closure, abnormally high or low production levels, or special events. For certain source activities, any of these may grossly affect the curve. For instance, construction often opens a facility to the air, resulting in increased natural gas consumption to make up the difference in heating. A facility closure will result in a sharp dip in the curve. Another method is to estimate consumption based on consumption at another facility. To do this, the organization must have a facility similar in form, function, and ownership to the one being measured. The consumption data covering the same time period as the period being estimated, and a meaningful metric. These are often also referred to as key performance indicators. Let's look at an example. In this example, Facility A is missing an electricity bill for the period of March 1st to March 31st, 2011. Facility A has a total area of 20,000 square feet. Facility B has an electricity consumption of 18,450 kilowatt hours for the same time period. Facility B has a total area of 15,000 square feet. In order to perform this estimate, we must first obtain the unit consumption for Facility B. This is done by dividing the consumption at Facility B by the area at Facility B. In this case, 18,450 divided by 15,000, which yields 1.23 kilowatt hours per square foot. Next, to calculate the estimated consumption, we must take the previously calculated unit consumption and multiply it by the area at facility A. In this case, 1.23 times 20,000, which yields 24,600 kilowatt hours. When using this estimate model, it's important to recognize that not all metrics are useful for all circumstances. Therefore, let's look at another example. In this case, Facility A is missing its annual employee commuting data. Facility B has consumption data for this activity type. The amount is the equivalent of 10,000 liters of gasoline consumed. In this case, it would be inappropriate to use square footage as a metric, since employee commuting is far more dependent on the number of employees than on the size of the facility. Note that Facility A has far fewer employees than Facility B, even though Facility A is larger. The calculation process is then essentially the same. We divide the consumption at Facility B by the number of employees at Facility B to obtain the unit consumption for Facility B in this case approximately 66 liters per employee. Then, the estimated consumption is calculated by multiplying the unit consumption at Facility B by the number of employees at Facility A, yielding a value of 1,000 liters. 
Using an estimate based on another facility is appropriate if your organization has data from another facility similar in function, location, and relative production levels. For example, it would be inappropriate to compare natural gas heating from a facility in Florida with that of a facility in northern Ontario, since the two would have widely different natural gas heating curves. Secondly, this estimate method should only be used if you have no historical data for the facility being measured. And thirdly, if the data gap is very wide. Lastly, consumption data can sometimes be estimated using a factor supplied by a relevant industry standard of best practice. For example, if you have a facility with an AC unit that has a capacity or charge of 10 pounds of R22, a common refrigerant, but you have no service records available, you will be unable to determine the exact amount of refrigerant that has been leaked over a period. Since this is a scope 1 emission type, it is inappropriate to ignore this. Therefore, an estimate will need to be made. The document shown below provides a standard leakage rate of 0.5% per year for HVAC refrigerants. Therefore, to estimate the leakage, we would multiply the charge value by 0.5%. This yields a value of 0.05 pounds of R22 per year. Using this estimate model is appropriate if, first, a standard of best practice exists for the specific source activity and industry sector relevant to the facility being measured, no surrounding data points are available, and no concurrent data points from similar facilities are available. 